Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. I'm recording this on Thursday rather than the usual Tuesday or Wednesday because I've just got back from the new forest where I had a short break cycling and the weather was absolutely amazing. Perfect for being on a bicycle. So will the settled conditions continue as we head through the next two weeks? Let's have a look. Now, this is the picture on Thursday, the 25th. High pressure is centered to the east, to the northeast, and there's an easterly flow actually moving across UK. And if we were in December, January, or February, it would be pretty cold, but we're not. So it's actually quite pleasant, although there have been some cold nights. Many places seeing their first frosts of the season. Now, as I run the sequence, keep an eye on the Atlantic because outbreaks of rain will be trying to push in and as we go through the weekend it looks like they will have some success but probably fragmenting especially in southern and central regions now with that said i think there will be some heavy bursts of rain mixed in particularly in the north running the sequence forwards the rain clears eastwards and we get some somewhat showery conditions for a while but then high pressure is building back in across southern and central regions rain increasingly restricted to the northwest of UK where there could be some further heavy outbreaks. Also at times the isobars are packed quite closely together meaning the possibility of it being windy. Here's the jet stream and a prayer temperature sequence for UK just there inside the red circle. The greens aloft are indicating relatively chilly air to begin with. The mottled shaded area shows a track of a jet and that's quite messy through the first few days. Then towards the end of the week, what we see is the jet just migrates a little bit further northwards and some warmer air potentially starts feeding into southern and central parts at least. Let's see some of the day-to-day -day developments. Now, this is the picture on Friday. It's dry across the UK. It may just be an odd rogue shower around, but you'll be very unlucky to catch one. Temperatures starting to edge up a little bit on recent days, 17, 18, 19 in southern and central areas. Not too bad, I guess, in Scotland and Northern Ireland, a few degrees lower, but we are now towards the end of September. But it's all changed the weekend. Outbreaks of rain push eastwards on Saturday, as, as I've already mentioned. They will be fragmenting, but some heavy bursts are likely to be mixed in, particularly in northern and western areas. This is the picture on Saturday. Lower temperatures generally, apart from perhaps East Anglia and the southeastern corner, but with that cloud and rain, those areas will see the temperatures pegged back into Sunday and the outbreaks of rain, the remnants of them clear eastwards. It's then a brighter setup with showers in places, but they probably will be fairly scattered. Temperatures climbing a little bit as those brighter conditions return, although quite chilly, I guess, in the north, north uh, Scotland there, just into double figures and Northern Ireland, 12 to 15 degrees. Then on a Monday, it's warming up further in England and Wales, temperatures in the north not changing a great deal and there are some outbreaks of rain potentially affecting Northern Ireland, Northern and Western Scotland but for most of the UK it's a dry pitch. There could be a little bit of drizzly uh, weather in Wales and uh, western parts of England as well but many places will have a dry day. And then Tuesday and Wednesday using the data from the GFS model, rain possibly continuing to be a risk in the northwest. Elsewhere, it's remaining dry. Temperatures starting to trend upwards. This shows 22 degrees in the southeast on Wednesday. So pleasantly warm as we head into October, but I think there is some uncertainty, of course, by this range about how things will be developing in terms of the details. I already mentioned the possibility of strong winds and this is just illustrating that it's shown a picture on Friday afternoon with data from the UK V model, the strongest gust in the northwest, and that will often be the case through the first week. I don't think winds are going to be a major factor, but possibly causing some issues in the northwest of the UK at times. The Mogreps G ensemble plot showing temperatures down at the ground level. They don't change much through the first few days. This is for London, but there are some indications they will be climbing there towards the end as we start to 
pull in some of that warmer air from the south or the southwest. So maybe October starting on a warm note. Rain, well, some rain here for the London area through the weekend, perhaps into the early part of next week with showery conditions, but I think it will be turning dry by then, as I've mentioned already, but, but there will be the potential for some rain on Saturday, more likely Saturday night into Sunday as that weather front pushes through, but wetter conditions generally in the west and the northwest as the aggregate charts here illustrate. They show rain totals for the first five days of the forecast period in the northwest, significant amounts potentially, especially according to the ECM, which is on the left, but central southeastern counties of England and East Anglia, very low totals really. A bit higher on the ECM, but the GFS not showing much rain in those areas at all. Moving forwards to the 10 day accumulations, the amounts have continued stacking up there in Western Scotland, especially with, with the GFS. You can see the orange shading there indicating over 100 millimeters in the Western Isles and Western parts of Scotland more widely. ECM not going for such high totals, but the distribution of rain is very similar. Not a great deal in southern, central and eastern counties of England through the full 10-day period. So in more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare with each other as we head towards the end of the first week? This is the GFS on a Thursday the 2nd of October. The orange shading indicates warmer air returning from the southwest. We've got high pressure there over continental Europe. So the risk of rain, as I've already mentioned, greatest in the northwest. Probably a lot of dry weather to be found, though. The Canadian model is similar. The German icon, a little bit different, but high pressure to the south. Low pressure, maybe having more of an influence in Scotland with some windy conditions going along with it. The ECM model, high pressure of air centred to the east, to the northeast, cooler air over much of England and Wales from the GFS and the Canadian model was shown, but nonetheless the broad scale patterns very similar. We've got that warm air starting to feed up from the southwest. It's just a little bit further to the west than on one or two of the other runs. Likewise with the artificial intelligence version of the ECM model, high pressure of air and this pulse of warm air moving up across Northern Ireland and maybe Western parts of Britain. Finally, the UK Met Office global model, the high pressure centered further south and the orange shading there covering much of the UK. So the warm air returning northwards according to this computer model run. So taking them as a whole, there's good agreement for high pressure to be influential as we head towards the end of the first week and also increasing indications that temperatures will be rising. That's not a definite, but it does look as though we could be pulling in some warm air from the south or the southwest. So daytime temperatures ticking upwards into the early part of October. Does that general theme continue as we head through the second week? Well, as ever at this range, it is just about the general trends and the probabilities. Use me ensemble data. Here is the 16 day GEFS plot for London. Upper air temperatures along the top are well above the average through the first few days. You can see the thick purple line, the ensemble mean is staying well above the thick black line, the 30 year norm. It dips low later on and towards the end of the second week, it's actually slightly below that thick black line. So there is a cooling trend. A few runs though are keeping in much warmer air even through the second half of the second week, but the likelihood is that we will see it turning cooler towards the end if this is correct. Rainfall, which is shown along the bottom, well, there are an ongoing number of spikes there. It's not changing a great deal through the second week, so a chance of rain, but I would think quite a lot of dry weather to be found throughout the second week. And the artificial intelligence uh, version of the European Ensemble model supports the same general idea. Temperatures at the 850 HPA level rising above that 30 year norm before gradually dipping back towards it later in the second week. Two meter temperatures using the GEFS data. Lots of the orange there, which indicates 
daytime maximums are 16 to 20 degrees in the London area. A few runs, not an insignificant number of them, are going for 21 to 25 for the first few days. So as I've said, there is the potential for some pleasantly warm weather to develop. The overnight lows, yellow is dominating in the columns for the first few days, 11 to 15, but then the amount of green increases, those runs going for 6 to 10 degrees. I think it is, it is worth highlighting though at this point that once you get outside London into the more rural parts of the home counties, for example, those temp nighttime temperatures are could be expected to fall quite a bit lower than in London itself. And that has been the case in recent days where I actually recorded an overnight low of, I think it was 2.5 degrees. It's one of the coldest September nights I've recorded on in, in my weather station in Berkhamsted. Uh, the Manchester picture is very similar to the London one, but I think there are a few more rain spikes there along the bottom, indicating a great potential for rain. And the temperatures at the ground level following similar trends, but at slightly lower levels. It's for 16s to 20s, which are dominating early on before the 11s to 15s take over through the middle and second part of the week. The overnight lows lots of green there and a little bit of dark green towards the end so six to ten but the and um, one or two runs going for the uh, one to five category but the same general rule applies if you get out of the towns into the rural areas into the frost pockets values can be several degrees lower at this time of the year the pitch for glasgow following a similar trend as well at the 850 hpa level with that said, I think there is more of a downwards uh, trend towards the end there, a negative anomaly showing more clearly than it was on the London and Manchester plots. It's also wet over uh, lots of rain spikes through the early part of the second week. Maybe their numbers actually decrease a little bit later, but the general theme is for there to be plenty of wet weather in the northwest. The temperatures, 11s to 15s through the days, some orange shading there, some runs going for between 16 and 20, and then later on the amount of light green increases, those are the 6 to 10, so some chilly days potentially later on fitting in with that cooler uh, trend at the 850 HPA level. Nighttime lows also may be taking a tumble with an increasing risk of frost through the second half of the period. Rainfall through the second week, the ECM charts here show the probability of five or more millimetres of rainfall on the first three days. The orange shading in the west is, and the northwest is indicating where that is the greatest, up to around 50 to 60 percent. Uh, much lower in eastern and central parts of England, between 0 and 20. So the weather's likely to be coming in from the west by this point at least. It is in the western parts of the UK. We could have a situation developing where weather fronts become slow moving as they push eastwards with the high pressure block over continental Europe still having a say in central and eastern parts of Britain. And it's fairly similar on the next three days. The orange shading there in western Scotland strongly supporting the idea of that being where the wettest conditions will be found. Lots of white and light blue now in central and eastern parts of Britain, which suggests a low chance of large amounts of rain. I think with that block to the east and weather fronts becoming slow moving as they push in from the Atlantic, it does always lead to the possibility of very wet conditions in some areas as those weather fronts grind to a halt. But it is, it is worth keeping an eye on that possibility. At the moment, it looks like it's, it, if it happens anywhere, it'll be in the northwest of the United Kingdom, maybe Northern Ireland too. The mean surface level pressure data table for York. There isn't much of a trend showing up here. An ongoing uh, similar amount of the dark orangey red. Those are strongly high pressure dominated runs. The amount of yellows yellow in the columns decreases a little bit, then it increases, then it decreases a little. Most of those runs are close to or a little bit above average pressure. And the low pressure dominated runs indicated by the greens, the blues and the purples, their numbers don't change a great deal either. So not a strong trend showing up by any means. Probably 
more of the same as we go through the second week dry periods, but the chance of rain at times, that being the highest in the west and the northwest, as I've discussed. Here's the GEFS mean surface low pressure snapshot chart for Sunday the 5th of October. High pressure is centered to the south, the southwest, an Atlantic flow there having more of a say across the northern half of the UK. The European ensemble looks a little bit different. That high pressure in the east could well be slowing down the progression of those weather fronts from the Atlantic, as I've already mentioned, leading to a more difficult picture to be confident about, but greater chance of higher amounts of rain in the west and the northwest, maybe the GEFS is suggesting. So to try and summarize all of that, week one, it's a dry start, but outbreaks of rain spread eastwards through the weekend. They could well be heavy in places, particularly the north and the west. Once they've moved away, showers are likely for a time, but then it turns settled in much of the UK. Of over is that ongoing chance of rain in the northwest. Temperatures steadily climb and also it could be quite windy at times. Week two, wettest in the west and the northwest, but rain is possible elsewhere, but there should be quite a lot of fine periods too. Temperatures, well, above average early on, the possibility of it being warm, but as we head through the second half of the second week, they take a dip. So, uh, there we have it lots of settled weather to be found. Probably. There is uncertainty as ever, but it does look as though high pressure will have a lot of influence through the next two weeks, particularly through the first week of over is that more unsettled interlude during the weekend. Unfortunate timing, I guess, from, from many people's perspective, but it is what it is. And then high pressure builds back in and it keeps a lot of the UK dry and also possibly warm for a time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Then as ever, if you did, please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already. Don't forget as well to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.